until he came out. And when he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded, and the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. Isn't that a remarkable? Now, why don't you turn with me to 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. You want to do that? That's the New Testament. This is another thing that Paul had to say about what we just read. But now Paul is seeing something that Moses had veiled because the people couldn't see what Moses was seeing. They were, they were to be under the law. So it says in 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, and uh, I believe it's the ninth verse that I want to start at. It says, for if the ministration of condemnation, speaking about the ministration of the law, be glory, which it did. Moses had a glory on his face, did he not? Much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made, which was made glorious had no glory in this respect, by reason of the glory that excelleth. We are in the acceleration of the glory of God. Even from the first two days or the first 2,000 years of Christianity, we are now entering into a third glory. A third and final consummation of God's glory in the earth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. In other words, Moses had to hide that understanding from the people because it was, he repre that veil represented the fact that, that the glory that was upon his face was a glory that excelled over the law. Yes. And they couldn't behold that. They were under the veil of their fleshly understanding, mm -hmm. under the law. That was their song. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to start seeing every dispensation of God as a stanza of one great song in the Lord. And Abraham was a song that all the children of Abraham sang the song of Abraham. Amen? The 12 tribes, everybody related their song to the covenant that God made with Abraham. But there was a higher song where the seed of Abraham was a word not only to his flesh, but it was a word of promise to the spiritual seed of faith in Christ. So that the song that the flesh sang was a song of lineage to Abraham. And it was only in Israel. But what it represented was a higher song that dealt with the seed that was in God, in Christ, before he ever created anything. And was realized in Mary, the virgin, when Christ was conceived in her womb by the Holy Ghost. So that song that Abraham was singing, that his lineage was singing, was the song of Israel, of a lineage, of trying to keep a bloodline pure, of not having any other gods 
uh, other than the God of, of, of Abraham. Moses had a song after that. Moses' song was, Israel, you're coming out of Egypt. I'm your deliverer and I'm setting you free. And we're going to go through the wilderness and then you're to come into the promised land. That was an earthly song to Israel. But the greater song, the complete song, was what Paul is saying. He's saying that he had to put a veil over his face, not only because he didn't want the people to see his natural face, but because they couldn't see a glory that was yet to come. They had to be veiled to that. And every glory in the earth has to be veiled, veiled, veiled. And that veil is in our flesh. Flesh doesn't mean this. Flesh and blood. Flesh, when it used in this instance, means your carnal reasoning, your natural mind. That's where the veil is at. Our natural mind can't receive the things of God. There's a veil over it. That veil, it says, I'm going to read that now as Paul says it. Could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. Now at this time that was the only testament they had. The New Testament hadn't been copied out yet. Paul is writing the New Testament at that time. So any testament has the veil over it. When men read it with their own Reasoning with their own minds. There's a blindness to it. I was blind to it. You were blind to it. I've heard the uh, scriptures. They can be read over and over and over and over. But atheists know the scriptures. They don't see what you and I see. The veil is over their minds. Men uh, can quote the scriptures all day long. They won't change. It's the veil over their eyes. They're just quoting words. But there's no music in them for it. But when the veil is uh, taken away, you see, which, 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 I'm going to read that, but their minds were blinded for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. When you get in Christ, guess what? The veil starts coming off. And the veil was more than just one covering. It was a layers of veils. Yes. And so within the last 2,000 years, guess what Christ has been doing? Taking the veil off. Taking the veil off. And that's how we start to see clearer. We once saw very dimly because of the layers of veil that was over our eyes. When I was a child, I spake like a child. And I thought like a child. I acted like a child. But when I become a man, I put away those childish things. My childish thoughts. My childish actions. Because I have grown. What do we mean by that? My veil has started coming off and I started seeing things as they are. All of a sudden I realized there is no Santa Claus. They've been lying to me all my life. <laughs> Amen? And that's growing up. Growing up is that, hey, you know what? Not everybody's really for me. Not everybody's the greatest person in the world. There's some pretty bad people out there. And people aren't always out for your good. Sometimes they're for your bad, for your evil. They do things that are meant for evil. And a child gets fearful over that. But a man knows the same thing, but he says then, he says they mean it for evil, but God will mean it for good. 